Steve Fedraktik with Seattle Avionics, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about some of the new features we've just added to our web-based flight planner, FlyQ Online. Remember that this works on your PC, or, as I'm doing it right now, on a Mac. The whole point behind FlyQ Online is that you can use your large screen, your keyboard, and your mouse on your home PC to be able to do your flight planning, your pre-flight issues, check the weather, and so on. With this new version of FlyQ Online, however, we also have the ability to help extend some of the features in FlyQ EFB on the iPad. You'll see how the two features work hand in hand. Let me give you an example. The most obvious thing that you may see on FlyQ Online that's new is, I move my mouse over this point, there's a new Documents tab. The Documents tab is very similar to the documents that you see in FlyQ EFB. For example, you see your pilot's guide and you see your sectional and tack legend. If I want to view one of these documents, I just tap on it. So I've tapped on the sectional end chart, TAC legend. Takes it a second to load. And you can use the plus and minus buttons to zoom it in, zoom it out. You can right click on it to download the image. This depends a little on your web browser. You can share it through email or whatever you want to do as well. Okay, So that's how you look at documents. If you want to add additional documents, Again, this is very similar to FlyQ EFB on the iPad. I hit the button that says Plus Documents, and it gives me my list of all the different categories of documents that I can add. We've actually curated well over 200 documents from the FAA, created many, many of our own documents, and so on. So, for example, I'll switch to maybe the FAA charts, and let's say that I'm taking, um, considering taking a flight to Anchorage soon. I'll take my Anchorage mark, uh, margin notes, maybe the Anchorage tack, I look down at Seattle Avionics too, and I want that ADSB primer. And on the FAA chart, I'd like to see the Aeronautical Chart User's Guide. So I've added in three or four documents. To add all of those, I go up to the top here where there's an Add button, and I'll click on that. And now all of those documents are added for me. So very simple. If I want to take a look at one of these, like now maybe the Anchorage margin notes, I just click on it. And here are the notes. Okay. Now, what's cool about this, though, it isn't so much that you get it on your uh, Mac or on your PC, but these documents, and I'll show you this uh, a little later in the presentation, but these documents are also automatically available to your FlyQ account on the iPad. Okay. Other things that you can do. Again, if I go into Add Documents, I can also, instead of using the library of documents, next to that is a gray button that says This Computer. I can use that to browse for any file on my Mac or my PC. There's a web button that I can use to type in a URL of any PDF file or any graphic file that I like from anywhere in the web. Let's just cancel this. And a few other things. For example, I can create new folders. Let's say they want to put all of my charts in one folder. I can hit the button that says plus folder, type this in, and say chart stuff. Click OK. Now there's a new folder up here. To move the documents in, it's pretty simple. I like on FlyQ EFB on the iPad. I click the Edit button, and I can say my Anchorage margin notes, move that into Chart Stuff. Uh, let's take the Anchorage tack, move that into that document too, and so on. Oh, and by the way, let's say that maybe I decided I really don't need that Aeronautical Charts User's Guide. Um, I can delete it with the red button. Are you sure? Yes. And the ADSB primer, let's say they want to rename that. We'll just call that ADSB. I don't type very well sometimes. ADSB info. And click OK. Now, when I hit done, you see everything refreshes nicely. And if I go into my chart stuff, I now see where I put the margin notes and the Anchorage tag. Okay, so very, very easy to do. I can hit my back button and go back to here. So that part's pretty straightforward. But one of the coolest features of the product, and we're, uh, frankly, one of the reasons why we did this, was to add in an ability which is not yet uh, uh, baked into FlyQ EFB. And that's the ability to create groups of documents. And this is where it gets really interesting. It, at Seattle Avionics, we have a company plane, and the company's plane is shared by many people. Many of you also share planes with other people, or maybe you're a CFI who flies a lot with students, 
or possibly you represent a corporate flight department. The point is that there's often documents that you need to share between yourself and with other people. And it's kind of a pain to email it all around to make sure everyone has the same copies of the same document and so on. So what we decided to do was to make this really, really easy to do. We created a whole new concept called groups. Now, one thing to understand here is that I'm going to create the group and manage it and add documents to it on my Mac, but it automatically already works on FlyQ EFB on the iPad, meaning you can't create the groups or manage them on the iPad, but the documents that you create, the groups that you um, uh, create and the groups that you subscribe to are automatically available today on FlyQ EFB on your iPad. I'll show you that at the end of the presentation. So let's go into the groups. You can get to groups in two different ways. You can either do this from settings. There's a big gear button on the right hand side uh, on the top right here next to where it says Captain Steve. That gets into settings or a shortcut from documents. You can just hit the button on the left hand side. This is groups. I'll just do that. Of course, it tells me no groups are found, explains what groups are for and so on. So I'm going to press new to create a group. You can call the group anything you like. New group is not the most exciting name in the world. The aircraft ident is 8121 kilo for our plane. So I'm going to name it that. I'll hit save. All right. At this point, I don't really have much on here, but let's add some members to this too. So right now, I'm the owner of the account. What does that mean? Every group has to have at least one, but it can have more than one, owner. An owner can uh, invite other people to join, can add documents, delete documents, rename documents, remove users, and so on. Basically, they have full control over everything that goes on in that group, as opposed to a member. A member is just that. It's someone who subscribes to the document, uh, but doesn't have the ability to modify the group at all. Okay, so you're automatically an owner when you create the group. And I'm going to go down to the group, group member section and type in an email address for someone else at the company, because I want to invite them. So this is for John Rudder. I'll say invite. Okay. Now down here it says John Rudder at Seattle Avionics. He's a member, not an owner, uh, and he is only pending, which means he's going to get an email from me, or at, rather from the system, that's inviting him to join the group. He has to click on that link in there, which is only valid for 48 hours. He clicks on that link to join the group if he so chooses. Uh, similarly, I will also ask uh, Keith Russo to join. So Keith R at seattleavionics.com. I will click the invite button for him as well. All right, so we have two pending members. Great, all right, that's probably enough for now. So I'll just hit save. If I want to then look at this again, I can take a look at, just click on uh, this. It tells me that I am a group owner. So the name of the group is N8121Kilo. I'll just click on that. It shows me some details. Let's add some documents to it though, because that's really the whole point of the exercise. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom and very similar to the way that you add documents uh, for your own personal use, there's an Add File button, which gives you the, a document that you can load off your PC or your Mac, or you can add by URL. I'll add a file. So I'll click that, click Add File. I actually want to load in uh, the POH from the Piper that we have. So I hit Choose. And now it's uploading. Processing. Okay, the upload's successful. So the page reloads, and you can see that we have the Piper PA28H in here. That's a terrible name, though, for it. So let's do this. Let's rename that document. I'm going to rename that just plain POH. I think that's better. And click OK. All right. Now, a couple of other things I should point out here. Just one other thing, really. It says notifications over here. What does that mean? Notifications allows any user to be notified automatically when new documents are added, when documents are deleted, or when documents are changed. Owners can also be notified when members join the group, or that is they accept membership, or when uh, they get deleted from the group, either by their own accord or because another owner deletes them. So automatically notifications are on. If you don't want to get all these emails about document changes, you can just uncheck the checkbox and you won't get them. All right, so I'll hit save. Okay, so the group is set up. The group now has one document associated with it. 
Um, again, you could probably want to add other documents like your weight and balance, uh, the scheduling document if you're sharing it between lots of people, uh, maintenance logs, anything like that can be added. All right, so let's get out to groups and let's just go back to um, taking a look at the product in general. So this, of course, is all the airport information and so on. Let's take a look at documents. So I'll click on the documents tab. Now, the document that I just added to that new group is not automatically added to my account. Just like all the documents that we have for the FAA or the Seattle Avionics documents, it's up to each individual user to actually add the documents that are available to them. They don't have to download all 200 FAA documents, and they don't have to download all the documents that are given to them uh, that they have access to because of a group. So to get that, you once again hit the plus documents to add a document. And if you take a look at the categories, look, we now have a new category on the side. The new category available to us, and this is just available to me or to John Rudder or to Keith Russo, because those are the only people in the group right now, it's N8121 Kilo. I click on that, and here's a document, the POH for our plane. I click on it so it's checked, press add, and take a look. Here it is. Here, in fact, is the POH. If I click on it, here's a Cherokee Archer handbook. All right. So that document now is available to me because I'm a member of the group. So this is why we think groups are really, really, really powerful. But again, the point of the exercise isn't just to create these groups for use on your PC or on your Mac, but actually on the iPad. So let's take a look at what my account now looks like when I use FlyQ EFB on the iPad. So here we are on my iPad. I'll tap on FlyQ EFB, launch this. Notice this is the shipping version of FlyQ EFB. This is not some new version for groups. This is just the same one that you have today. All right, so I'm taking a look at FlyQ. It shows me where I am and so on. All right, so I just tap somewhere in the map, go down to the bottom to my existing documents tab, and look at that. The documents that are there now are, not surprisingly, all the same documents that I loaded myself. And if I go to my chart stuff, there are those documents available to me. The Anchorage tag and so on. If I want to add new documents as before I hit the plus button say add document. Notice one big difference though. In addition to the uh, categories I had before the FA charts, uh, the weather and so on, is a new one. N8121 Kilo. This is of course a POH. There's a green next to it because we've already downloaded it. But you get the idea that the new groups that you create are automatically available to you and all the documents that you add are automatically available for you today using the version of FlyQ EFB that you already have in your hands. Let's get back to FlyQ Online for one more thing that I'd like you to see. This is a feature that we also just added to FlyQ Online, but once again, it actually adds data which is automatically and immediately available to FlyQ EFB on the iPad. So this is called the ability to import uh, what we call personal waypoints, personal waypoints or often called user-defined waypoints. And now you can mass import them just by loading a text file. So I'm going to go to my gear icon here. The gear icon is my settings. And in the flight planning section, I have my pilot profiles, my aircraft profiles, my groups, but also my personal waypoints. I'm going to click on that. It tells me I don't have any personal waypoints. Well, I know that. I can add them manually like this by hitting the new button, but I don't really want to do that. Let's say that um, I fly commercially and there's 15, 20, or a couple hundred different points that I want to look at all the time. Or if I'm flying some kind of a search and rescue mission and there's a lot of different points I want to import. Well, rather than type all of those in manually, I can now hit the Import Waypoints button. I can select a text file like this. And here's my list. I created this using Microsoft Excel. You can do it with uh, any kind of text editor like Notepad on a PC or text edit on the Mac. doesn't really matter. So it's my list. I will hit choose. And immediately it tells me four were added, zero updated, no blank lines, no errors. Terrific. Hit close. And look at that. We now have a number of different personal waypoints added to the system. Notice that there are two different names to it. There's kind of a short name. Uh, it's just, this is what we call the ident. So B square uh, is short for Bellevue Square, Old Fact, Old Factory, and so on, Space Needle, and so on. If you click on any of those, you see the details. You can rename them. Like, you can rename it Steve. You probably won't do this. 
did save, and now the ident to that is now Steve. Okay, so it's a very simple, very easy to use feature, and it's tremendously powerful if you have dozens or hundreds or even thousands of personal waypoints that you want to add into the system. It is way easier, way faster to do that using a spreadsheet than to type all those in individually. So hopefully that gives you some concept of some of the things that we've been doing with FlyQ Online and how they relate to FlyQ EFB on the iPad. For Seattle Avionics, I'm Steve Podrachik. Have a great day.